Okay, let's do this. This is the critique for the uh, focus stacking project uh, for the second section of 143. There aren't that many files that got turned in, so I think we're going to be able to blaze through this in one session um, of about 10 images. So let's get this underway. Well, here we have this nice little elephant carving standing on uh, um, a tabletop of some kind. Generally, if you're going to do this, unless you really want to leave little shards of things around, you're going to want to clean up these spots like these. That's really simple. Just use the spot healing brush. Click on them. And they're gone. So you could go over your, your piece and clean it up pretty nice it'd be it'd be a good uh, good and easy correction the other thing I would do is go and pick up the burn tool we haven't used this much because it has a tendency to affect color but in this case it may not make any difference even if it does so let's bring these bright areas down so that we really start looking at the elephant not the background. It's still there. It still has that nice out of focus area. But now we can really concentrate on the sculpture. Okay, let's grab another one. Well, here we have what I assume is to be a focus stack along these wall display units with the little uh, flowers in them. The only problem, of course, is this one is sharp, very sharp. This one is not. If you zoom in and look at this flower, it's soft. So you either needed more files to your focus stack, um, or you needed to really be careful when you were making the files you had that you had all of these sections in focus. And then we also have our issue of the composition generally. What is this area, this big blank area all about? What's it doing to your shot? Remember what I told you, just because these are technical assignments does not mean that you can forget everything else you know about making a good photo. Oh, this is a very pretty flower. It's cool against the black background. I don't know if it's shot that way or you dropped it in, but whatever, it looks really pretty good. Uh, if you were making this for a postcard or a poster, then this area over here is perfect for some kind of text. That would be really, really a nice touch. So you have a potentially a nice commercial shot. As a standalone shot, I would trim this down considerably. Just because it has a certain aspect ratio to the shot that the camera enforces on you doesn't mean that the photograph always works best in that particular configuration. Here the exposure is perfect, the focus stack is perfect, but we could make you emphasize this flower a little better by cropping in on it somewhat. Oh, a little light painting! Okay, that's cute. Um, and it does add some sport to an issue of focus stacking. Concentrating from the light beam in one of them to the background. So, very interesting. Again, I would crop in a little bit. This area over here is extremely bright. And it's drawing us away from the part that's important, which is the subject and the light. This is where the photograph is. And now I would come in and again I'm just going to use the burn tool. It's not going to affect that highlight much. And then let us really concentrate more on the actual subject. So this was pretty simple interesting concept to do. That's an interesting concept of playing off the uh, 
little pieces of whatever they are that are both outside and inside this bowl um, or the container, whatever the proper term for it is. It's a good use of focus stack. You did a really nice job getting all of this area in here in, in focus. Again, we've got a big area over here that isn't doing a thing for us. So don't be afraid to just get rid of those. Some people get caught up in an old idea that went around fairly, oh God, it just took over everything for a while. And that was that you weren't allowed to crop. You had to take whatever was in the camera and you had to compose whatever was in front of you to shoehorn it into the aspect ratio of your camera. I think and thought then that was nonsense. If you pre-visualize a scene out in the landscape that is a beautiful panorama, did that mean if you were shooting with a two and a quarter square film camera, like a Hasselblad, did that mean you couldn't shoot it because it didn't really fit into that square format? It's nonsense. No photographer would do that. So pre-visualize your shot and do the best you can. In this case, get top to bottom as close as possible so that you lose as little as possible and then be prepared to edit it. I think also we could use some of this area being toned down just, just a little because the real part of the shot is the vase with the pieces of whatever that is, candy or whatever in them. This is cute to add to the focus stack. Doesn't do much for the photo though. Well, here we have a focus stack along this outdoor planter. Our only problem is we are massively overexposed for this. Open up the camera raw filter. Now, I'm not going to have anywhere near the adjustment available that I would have had were this the raw file. But it hopefully will give us some sense of making it work, assuming it'll open up here. So the first thing I would have done is come in and bring these highlights down and then brought the overall exposure down. We'll bring the contrast back up just a little. Now maybe we can pull these highlights back up so. I'm going to add a little clarity so that we've got a slightly sharper image, just a little bit of vibrance to put a little more color in here. And now you can see the difference that made. And we could have made that difference a whole lot better had we done it in Camera Raw. Again, then I would burn down some of these areas which are very hot. And let us concentrate on this area. Now this front flower here is soft. So the focus stack didn't give us this whole range of, of flowers. Well, this one almost fits better in the narrow depth of field category. For a focus stack, we really need to see this whole, I assume this is the saddle area since this is leather, and that this is the seat or the saddle on a bike or on an ATV or on something. But we really needed for the focus stack to see it all, not just this portion of it. Well, here we have a courtyard scene with a, uh, a good use of the focus stack. Everything from the beginning back is in focus. I do not know if this line down here really should be curved, if that's actually built into the concrete that way, or if it's a lens distortion. But what is pretty certain is that these posts, this gateway post, probably should be straight. So the first thing I would do is go ahead and, in order to straighten these up, transform, and we're going to go to skew. You all remember how to do this. We've done it a number of times. Here 
hit enter and then deselect control or command D would do that now what we'd probably want to do is open this area up a little bit um, in order to do that selectively the simplest way I think to do it is to do our duplicate layer we will make a screen layer oh yeah that opens it up quite a bit so now we'll do an inverted mask we'll hold down the alt key hit the layer mask icon this is black so we need to use a white brush we'll set that brush to about 80 percent make sure that it's very soft and a little bigger we'll be here all day doing this now if we wanted to enhance that effect all we have to do is come down and duplicate the duplicated layer mask layer and now it's much lighter so we can get all of that information back into our shot I would probably get rid of this little overhanging thing that's kind of annoying and maybe bring the blue sky down but it's a good use of focus stacking so let's move on here ah we have a little water carrier and other little tchotchkes from all over it looks like the focus stack is good everything from the front item to the back item is in focus you've left the background out of focus which i think works pretty well here i would simply want to bring that background down a bit and i might want to bring the entire thing down just a touch so let me go into curves I'm gonna hold down the alt key and see where this really is okay it's down see where that circle is on the line it's down uh, below mid gray So now with that simple curves adjustment, I can bring this foreground tableau with the little uh, porcelain pieces and the what look like snow cone or, or snow globe kind of pieces um, into better focus. And I would then do what I could do to try to take this post down a little bit. I'm using the burn tool right now. And now we've got something that really stands out uh, considerably better. Here's, we'll make a snapshot of it. Here is the original. Here's the one we've corrected a little. So it's, it's a very simple correction, very quick to do. You've just got to start doing them so that your, your images really stand out the way you may perceive them. Oh, this is pretty. Wow. Very pretty uh, group of roses. I don't know. If, yeah, these are, these are live roses, it looks like. Very subtle, very soft. Again, this would make a very nice card. This, this shot would have some real commercial application to it. Nice pastel-looking flowers. You could put um, a nice greeting on this. My old commercial background won't leave me alone sometimes when I see these. And I keep thinking, what could you do to turn this into cash? Of course, I'm sure none of you care about that, so it really doesn't matter. In this case, I don't think I would do much to it, except I might try to bring down the tones on this side. This side is pretty nice.
and I'm just clicking the burn tool. It's only set to about 60%. It's set for midtones. And that stands out a little more. The pastel look was kind of cool. Let's see if we can find a happy medium now that we've got tone in a few more places. We'll do our duplicate layer. We'll make it a screen layer, which is going to lighten the whole thing. And now we'll bring that opacity down to about half. So now we've got a shot similar to your original one, but we've got more detail over on this side. So it's one of the options you could use. But again, I think this is a very nice shot. A very sellable kind of shot. It'd also make a heck of a jigsaw puzzle. Okay then, that appears to be our last one for this section. I've got a lot of work getting trying to catch up with you guys on grading and all. Spring break was fun for me. Now it's time to get back into harness and get this stuff done. So I'll see you next time. Good work. Good work, guys.